Hello, welcome back to another episode. On Motherland, Fort Salem Season 3 Episode 6, when they were finally free to leave horses home, Abigail and Adil, Sila, and Tally left on separate missions. Surprisingly, no one suffered further damage as a result of their travels. Thelma Berkeler, the Bellwether unit's keeper from the Council of the Great River, sided with them after engaging Hurst and his Camarilla men which undoubtedly aided their cause. Thelma organized the transportation for all three excursions, demonstrating her prowess as a travel agent. The most important task was for Abigail and Adel to return a weak alder to the mycelium buried under Fort Salem. They had to have taken the riskiest route possible as they crossed the Camarilla-infested eastern United States. It was advantageous that Sila could provide the group with a route plan for sneaking onto the university. However, Abigail was going back to a Fort Salem that had been altered by Silver's spies. The oversight officers under Colonel Jarrett were now in power, and Petra was kowtowing to their every whim. Petra has been juggling her army's operations with protecting the fugitives despite Jarrett and company's interference. It must be useful to telepathically instruct your soldiers to ignore that idiot Jarrett and issue contradictory commands. The witch bomb is dead, but somehow Alder has returned. Since Silver is enlisting a battalion of Camarilla stormtroopers to lead the invasion of the session, it will unfortunately become harder to operate around the Camarilla presence. When Thelma battled Hurst and his goons, she unintentionally provided the Camarilla with the justification for an invasion. Never mind that while pursuing the fugitives, they unexpectedly broke into a session facility. Thelma's deeds provided the Camarilla with the justification they required to attack a sovereign territory. Fortunately, Thelma was among the native leaders who understood better than to put their faith in a white person. She had thus been assembling a militia for precisely such an occasion. As a result, the Camarilla will find itself in a battle with the Session Witches and maybe even the Army Witches. They'll regret making that choice. How do those witches get the spree to join them? The Camarilla couldn't possibly have as many members as those witches, could they? Especially now that the Mycelium has brought Alder back into the mix. Trust in the mother, she said. Alder and Willa first finished securing every Camarilla drill location where the mycelium was being poisoned. That implies that witches will regain their full power, which should disadvantage the Camarilla and their stolen voice boxes. Rail must be pleased with this progress as she is now getting better at the mycelium. Then she returned to Fort, giving the witches who had been subject to the Camarilla hope. Alder saves the witches after coming back from the grave. What part will Penelope play in the impending public relations battle? She's too unpredictable to tell the world that her father, the president, set her up for being publicly killed, isn't she? Based on how she attacked Abigail. On their journey back to his house, it was wonderful to see Sila and Edwin become closer. With Rail's situation being so uncertain, he acknowledged that Sila is all he had left. His last surviving link to Rail is Sila. Edwin needed to know the real story about Willa and her time serving with the spree since she was allegedly slain in combat. Given that Willa was shielding Rail in her own manner, Edwin handled the situation effectively. But why was Willa so determined to prevent Sila, Edwin, and Rail from speaking with one another? Yes, the mycelium is now the safest place for Rail. She would still like to hear from her father and girlfriend, despite the fact that, at first, Willa might not have agreed to return Rail to the real world, but at least Quinn could communicate with her. The closest thing to a proper farewell that Edwin and Willer received was that appearance. When Tally went back to California to make sure her mother May was okay, she also took care of a lingering issue. Tally saw the implementation of Silver's witch registration pilot program. She also found out that agents had staked out her mother's residence. As May's book club was organizing a raid on a government office to take witch's information in order to stall the registration process, she learned that May had her own secrets. To protect May and her middle-aged raiders, trained soldier Tally went along. She saw permanent witches' collars in the building's basement using her scrying power. May proved that Tally came by her determination naturally when she set the collars on fire, which eventually led to the building blowing up. Yet the book club was back in session when May's watchers crashed in. Tally and May made up, making their parting more amicable this time. May even gave the disillusioned Tally a pep talk, putting her in a better frame of mind for her return to the fight. Thanks for watching. Comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget.